You mentioned a quote as well about people's opinions. There's a famous uh, motivational speaker. He says somebody's opinion doesn't have to be a reality. I think you quoted that recently. Yes, um, that is a Les Brown. Right. I've listened to him for years. I right. recommend everybody listen to him. One thing I read him is a very good listener. You know what? I think your podcast is going to go very far. You're a very good listener. No, it is. I've got big ears. Look, I'm blessed. This is series two of the Punchline Podcast. It's all about Mike, body and soul. Today's esteemed guest is a big player on the Birmingham scene and it's... Navid Central. Navid Central. You get me? That's what I'm talking about, yeah? So where did it start? Where's the name coming from? You know what? The funny thing about it is, yeah, is that... What do you mean? The name or the way, I've said, the way I say Both? the name? Okay, the name obviously came from my mum. <laughs> obviously your surname is not central <laughs> or is it you know no matter change it by deed ball right the funny thing is I actually said that once yeah they said to me uh, the BBC were doing something the other day in town and the woman goes obviously for BBC 3 I don't know when it's out but like a show they're asking questions they go oh um, so what is your name I go Naveed Central she said is that your because I knew they are going to put your name on this she was like no is that your actual name I go today I just ch I changed it by deed poll like my name is Naveed Central you know what I'm saying and she was like really and I was trying to wear my mask, but she don't want me to put my mask. Put my mask, yeah. Basically, um, to design a mask. You get me? Forget Gucci. Forget Armani. What about now? In general, where can we get these masks from? Um, they're not officially out yet. I've just got them myself yet. Yeah, but I will at some point. Maybe by the time this video is out, though, I might have some out. Yeah, watch out for the mask. Well, you might have already seen it. But basically, the, the name. Um, I just had different like, ideas. Initially, I had a channel called Naveed TV when I was in uni, yeah. Um, did a bit of a few things there, but then, uh, you know, um, I deactivated that channel, right? And then um, came out with Naveed Central. But Naveed Central was just an idea. It just come, come into my head. I thought, okay, what can I think of? What can I think of? I'm quite a creative guy, I ain't gonna lie. So if I'm sitting there, I'm always thinking. I thought Naveed Central was the name to go with. And that was it. And then the way I've created Navid Central is and was because, now you can understand it, right? Because I wanted people, I wanted it to be memorable, but also wanted anyone who doesn't know me, when they hear it, they think they'll know where to go. Let me give an example, right? So I've, I have different sayings. You've probably seen my, some of my videos. I say, hello, or D or, or random stuff, yeah? I'll say like little phrases that every like channel or things We'll have the um, thing. Now, a few years back, there was a, a TV channel called Viva. Yep. And do you remember, it just went crazy. I said, up your Viva. That was, that was the catchphrase. But the, the intelligence behind that was this. When you hear up your Viva, what is in that name? Viva. So automatically, Viva, you know? But if it was just a catchphrase, like you've got, okay, or like a slogan, like you've got Tesco, every little helps, right? If you type in every little helps, okay, Tesco might pop up. But if someone randomly screams on the side, who you don't know them, you just hear someone say, every little helps. You're not going to know what that is. And even if you checked it up, it might come up, it might not come up, especially if it's not a big, massive yet. But if you hear someone shout out, Tesco, and you type in Tesco, you might find it. So same with Navid Central. If you say, heard someone say, Navid Central, even if you've never got an opportunity to ask him, what is that? It must be central. Hold on one second. Let me type in. Bam, pops up. So right. it's like a marketing strategy, yeah? Exactly. Now the elongated version, Navid Central. See, I could have decided Navid Central. Elongated version was because I wanted people to remember it. Now, initially, when I made the channel, if you check my first video, it's just Navid Central. And that's because me and my friend, right? It was the guy I was working for in the holidays, right? Um... When I say holidays, it weren't really holidays for me, but when it's the summer holidays, yeah, is that he, uh, me and him had a conversation as I'm creating the channel, and he said, yo, why don't you do, like I said, no, he said, he goes, do it like that, yeah? Because I said it as a joke. He was like, oh, you know what, bro? Why don't you do that for the channel? Then I went home and thought, nah, I don't want to do it like that. It sounds a bit stupid, right? So I never did it. I went back the next day to the workplace. He's gone, uh, Bro, it's in my head all night. I swear to God, this is exactly what he said. He said it's in my head all night. I was literally saying it to my wife. She's saying what? She's woke up saying it. 
I go, what do you mean? He goes, it's actually really catchy. So I go, hold it one second. I'm onto something here, right? Bam. Put in the next video. Uh, people start, whoever, whoever had watched that video is coming up to me saying, Naveed Central, right? I started thinking, hold up. I'm onto something. It's actually catchy. It get, go, gets into your head. And from there, it's that. Okay, so you talked about your first media project was at uni. It wasn't a media project. No, 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 no. So basically, in uni, I did a VR <laughs> Uni, when I went there, was a bit of a character, right, yeah? It's going to sound really crazy, but it was like being famous, but I weren't famous. Does that make sense? So, like, martial art, I've always been a people person, right? So, like, when I went to uni, I've always been that guy who just meets people. See, when you go to uni, everyone just meets people and they're like, hello, how you doing? What's your name? Blah, blah, blah. With me, I've always been that guy, though. I've always been that guy, right, yeah? Um, even you've seen one of my best mates is coming with me today, Imran, yeah? You, you can tell he's a people person as well. He's coming, you know, we, we, the way we've grown up is, we're like that, aren't we? we talk to people, you know what I mean? Sociable people, like that's what you should be, I believe, yeah? So, um, when I was in uni, it's quite sociable. Then I think in my second second year, I just started doing a bit of rapping. I weren't that good, but I just started doing it just for love. I thought, forget it, why not? So I created a channel, right? I mean, it wasn't good, and I just took it off. But yeah, that was in the VTV. But I had a radio show in uni and everything, man, like, I've always been watching videos, you know Vitali? Vitali, yeah, he's a TV, TV. Um, I've always been watching him. And I've always, whenever I've watched him, I thought, you know what? I could do what he's doing. Literally everything I've seen Vitali do, right? Um, even the things I'm not allowed to do, because obviously we're Asian, you can't do it, right? I know I can do it. So I was like, I'm going to do it one day, I'm going to do it one day, I'm going to do it one day. You mentioned a quote as well about people's opinions. There's a famous uh, motivational speaker. He says, somebody's opinion doesn't have to be your reality. I think you quoted that recently. Yes, um, that is a Les Brown. Right, Brown. I've listened to him for years. I right? recommend everybody listen to him. You got to be hungry. That's how he talks, isn't it? You know, um, honestly, every 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 day, every day I'm in the shower, I'm listening to motivational speeches. Right, like literally, that is me. Like I've had people say to me, "Yo, why do you listen to motivational speeches? Ah, oh, they're, they're bull, whatever. I don't listen to them." I swear, in my mom's life, listen. Throughout my life, I have listened to motivational speeches, and it's kept me going. Why? I'm a big dreamer and it's kept me going because it's like, yo, I don't care. You know, let me tell you something. You might not have that friend or that family member who's going to be pushing you, but you got indirect mentors like these guys. That's what I'm trying to do. Like, when I, through my actions and what I do and sometimes when I'm giving, like, these talks and stuff. That's why, like, I, I, I love doing this kind of stuff because I get to give my voice. I get to voice my opinion, right? Um, I also do mukbangs, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're similar to podcasts, but they don't because I was meeting on camera and having a chat with people. But that's so to get like exactly like you're doing with me to get advice from these people who might have done well. And you're like, you know, hold up one second, come in, share your few nuggets. You know what I'm saying? Because it could be that one point that someone could feel like giving up or thinking, you know, what am I going to do in life or I'm going to give up right now? And they just listen to that person, right? You know, everyone, remember, not every motivational speaker you're going to resonate with. Because someone might, you know, someone might have been given on a plate, but it doesn't mean they're going to give on a plate. They're not smart. Still knows what they're doing, right? Um, and you know, you, you've got to pick and choose who your motivational speakers are. Sometimes people don't like when someone screams like Les Brown, they're like, oh, nah, he's a bit too much, right? You got Eric Thomas, right? Love him, but I love them. Like, if I'm listening to motivational speech and the guy's saying, yeah, you can do this. You got in life, you know, you can do whatever you want. There's no energy. There's, I don't like that, but some people are a bit more calmer, so they like that. It depends who you are, what who matches you. I, I prefer a guy being like um, Andy Frasilla. Do you know who he is? So he's got a real, um, real AF podcast, right? Um, and he's he, he's like a I think he's I think he's a billionaire, or he's in the hundreds of millions and stuff. And he does um, something with a guy called Ed Milet. Now Ed Milet's like. He's a guy who's been interviewed by Omar the Rex Rockstar. Get rid of him as well. Yeah. So basically, the passion of you. But in that, he went from naught to $450 million. That's the interview that was in that year. They, they involved in fitness brands and stuff like that. And basically, you know, when he, when he talks, it's like the way he goes in is like, you know, real straight to the point. And I like listening to that. I like listening to real. You know what I mean? Like he'll tell, he'll say on there, he goes, he'll say, you know, you're deadbeat. You need to fix up right now. I don't want to swear nothing, but he swears on me to be like, yo. You need to fix that up right now. You know what I'm saying? What are you doing with your life? Are you, you know what I mean? And when I hear that, when I hear that Les Brown saying, yo, I used to sleep in my office and people were laughing at me saying, look at that guy telling people to dream and, and look at him sleeping in his office. What is he doing, right? You know, 
when you're hearing that or you're hearing Andy Frasilla say, yo, um, when, uh, Andy Frasilla mentioning that he, he put up a post on Twitter or was it or something or where he said he will be, you know, the number one motivational speaker in the world. And he said, look, I'm not number one, but, I, but I, this year I got rated number 14. And he goes, that's better than, you know what I mean? That's better than where I was, the number 14 in the world. Just imagine what I say. Number 14 in the world. Guys, one of the, like, new, and, and his podcast is really not one of the biggest ones. Well. Like, it's, it's crazy for like, you know, in that little point, in that little point, what did he say? Someone said to me, oh, you really think you're going to do that, blah, blah, blah. And he said that was a family member, I think, one of his cousins. And that's where it's going to be. You'd be surprised, the people close to you. But it's not their fault. Like, you know, I think majority of the time, people who tell you you can't do stuff are not doing it deliberately. They might be looking out for you. They might be coming from a good place, right? Like, if someone sees me doing random stuff, they might be thinking, okay, what are you doing, right? Um, if they see me dancing, probably they're like, okay, what are you doing, bro? Like, because they look, because if they know me, they're gonna be thinking, okay, hold up. Let's look at it from the outer perspective, right? On paper, okay, guy's got a law degree, he went to a good university, mashallah, he went to a grammar school, right? Why didn't he just become a lawyer? Does that make sense, right? He, mashallah, he can talk. But that's not my dream. You got a mindset, a pre preset mindset kind preset of thing. Mindset. Yeah, like we gotta, we gotta do this, we gotta do that, and that, and that, that is it, like carved, right? Like, that, that, yeah, that, that's how we got to be. And even if they never did that, obviously, like, if I was a kid and someone said to me, you want to be a lawyer, obviously, yeah, yeah, I want to be a lawyer. Like, you'd respect lawyers, a respectable job. But a lot of times people think it's far-fetched to maybe become, you know, a world-class motivational speaker or the number one podcast in the world or like a YouTuber or an entertainer or an actor. Like, people think, yeah, okay, people do it. But it's only like, this is what they're always saying it. It's one in a million or a billion that does it. One in a million. Yeah, but why can't you be that one in a million? Who, who's stopping you from being that one in a million? Why can't you be that? You have to believe in the way the Les Brown. Like, you know, in it. Like, Les Brown said, yeah, and, I, and I feel it. And I think it could just come down to that as well, self-belief, that when Les Brown says, I heard someone saying, you know, you got to be the one and, you know, there's, there's only going to be one of you in a million. And he goes, I was sitting there thinking, you know, I'm that one. And when I hear Les Brown saying, I feel like I'm that one, I feel like I'm that one when he's saying it. So I'm thinking, okay, hold up. Maybe it does come down to that. I think there's only, it is true. Maybe it is only one in a million, but it's only that one in a million who have that feeling, that self-belief. You know a lot, a lot right? Here, it? If you're not Muslim and you're watching this, right? Obviously, and you don't, or you don't believe in God. It's, you know, just, oh, you, and you do believe in a higher purpose or you believe in the, whatever you believe in, right? Just believe that, you know, self-belief is key and everything does happen for a reason. And sometimes people, I know there's people out there who don't believe everything happens for a reason. But even if you don't believe everything happens for a reason, just know that if it's going to happen, it's down to you, right? Don't let external factors get in the way. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll put a video up the other day. Um, no, today was it? I did yesterday and it was, uh, I was on a balcony, right? At the cube and it was, I said, yo, to achieve great heights, you've got to be willing to go. Um, you've got to be willing to literally, um, do what it takes. And the thing is, I said, to get to here, here, we jumped on a lift. But I said, if that lift didn't work for us to, if you really wanted to get up, yes, yeah, so we were taking the stairs, right? And that's how it is. You know, sometimes it might be more difficult. It might take longer. And you might not, so you look, for example, you could press the lift button and it's not working, right? Or you press the lift and it goes, gets stopped halfway. But that makes sense. God forbid, I never want to be in a situation, but you know what I mean? Um, but you think, inshallah, but you think is, hold up. You might not be able to find the stairs. So sometimes it might not, you might be looking, okay, or you might be about to walk out the door thinking, okay, there's no stairs. But if you lose your brain and you keep looking and looking and looking, you're going to find them stairs, bro. You're going to find them, right? You know, and uh, that's what I believe, bro. I believe in, yo, you got to do it. And Like, I, I believe in that, you know what I'm saying? Get rich or make it or die till you die trying. That's me. That is me. I swear in my mom's life, I am make it or die trying. Like, if I die, like, trust me, like, if I die and I haven't made it, yeah, you will know one thing about me. I did not stop going. That is me, bro. Like, that, that's how I am. I'm like, go, 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 go. There might be times where I halt. There might be hard times where I stall, bro. Like, you know, I'm there, like, thinking, like, not being able to go to sleep, thinking, like, what am I going to do next? I'm like that. Guys, I'm that kind of guy. I can't go to sleep. So like, I, mean, I can't go to sleep. But what I mean is, I'm always thinking, even in my sleep, I'm thinking, even if I wake up, you know, when people wake up halfway through the sleep. I'm that guy who's waking through halfway through my sleep and I'm thinking, okay, what am I doing tomorrow? What am I tomorrow? Well, how am I going to make it? What am I going to do tomorrow? What am I going to do? How am I going to make it next? How am I going to make it? What video I'm going to do? It sounds crazy, right? And people would think that is mad, right? 
But this is how my brain works. Like, like it's little, little things that like everyone's different. Like even like this little thing, like maybe it's a bit of OCD. Like we jumped here to be real with you. You know, um, I, I said I preferred someone sitting on my right. That's just how I am. Like it, it just feels more comfortable. Like I know it sounds weird, but like, you know, I'll probably be on a date. You know, I don't, I don't recommend obviously show around, but I'll probably be on a date and I swear in my own life, I'm sitting with a girl. I, I, I pref I've always felt that like I've always had a better connection if she's sitting on my right than when she's sitting on my left. Right, even if I'm gonna, I don't obviously. I, if you wanna keep hello and PG, but even when it comes to making a move, like if, if I'm alright, I, I feel like it's way easier. <laughs> it sounds, I swear to God, it just sounds it's crazy in it. But everyone's got their own sort of little thing that they like. It's like you know, like sometimes, you know, if, if your brother or your, your sister opens your door and they don't, or your mom opens the door and they don't close it, you know that even when they let be open, I think a lot of people have that though. And you're like, you know, just close the freaking door, man. You know what I'm saying? But look, it's only that little bit. Like, okay, if you haven't had that experience, then it's, uh, then you probably ain't gone through that. Yeah. You're missing out. But I'm sure, but a lot of people I've spoken to have that. And it's weird though. It's like, yo, actually, you know what? I'm going to do a comedy video on that. I, just, I need to do a video on that. Where someone told you, open it. So close the freaking door, man. I, love that. I think I'm going to do that. Just, guys, ideas just pop. Look, that idea just came right now. I just thought of it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it right here. Yeah? You know, you, the, the thing you're saying about people sitting on your right, it's funny you mentioned that. The thing I relate to that is, a lot of sports stars, because obviously I follow sport a lot through boxing, cricket, uh, any martial arts. A lot of people have what they call rituals or something to just set their mind. And if it aligns your focus, why not? For example, I think the tennis player Rafa Nadal, he puts his feet in a certain position. He puts a bottle between his feet. He wipes his left arm first, wipes his right arm second, then he wipes his sweatband. After every three sets, he changes his sweatbands. It's just a, a process. It doesn't affect his game. There's no scientific proof or uh, track record of it improving his performance. But it sets his mind in a good place. And he's one of the best tennis players in the world. Uh, cricketers, certain cricketers, you know, when they mark the stumps, there's one Pollard, he takes a bale off and he uses the bale to mark the stump when he doesn't have to, but it works for him. And he's got a high strike rate. He's a successful international cricketer. He's got a lot of charisma. So obviously you've got a name where you want to be in it. Where do you want to be in five years? Honestly, my dream is to be motivated. In five years, right? Uh, um, there's many, many things because there is... It's you don't have to be five years. I just plucked the number up, but whatever your I'm, 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 uh, you know, a man without a plan is going nowhere. So five years is a good day. Um, honestly, my vision right now, like obviously my cousin's an all in it, right? Yeah, so I, I, he does keep saying to me, I'm very good at speaking. So I'd be good if I was an all at some point, right? But I said to him, Obviously, um, he's done it with all this Lomi and that, and he's done really well. He at the age of 16, he changed. He was a good-looking guy. Had girls uh, after him, everything just changed in two seconds. Man gave the whole bam, done. Come all along by the age of 20, 21, and now, you know what I mean? He's doing amazing. Then Mustan Tiratari, M-U-S-T-A-N-S-I-R underscore A double T A R I on Instagram as well, right? Hopefully, you could probably bring him on one of the shows as well. And I spoke uh, to him already. He's yeah. mates with my mate Raf. Oh, yeah, no, Raf, no, Raf, yeah, yeah. So um, he's my cousin. You can tell the resemblance when you look at us, right, as well. And he's, you know him. One thing I love about him, he's not a judgmental guy. Like, even if he sees me doing bad, he'll be like, come on, you know what I mean? But, he, but he's not, he's not one of them, like, you know what I mean? Like, he'll blast you, this and that. And like, um, you know, the funny thing is, sometimes, like, he's probably posted something on mine. And then people have posted a message him saying, oh, why are you posting the V4? Because I'm, 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 obviously, I'm a bit controversial in it. You know what I mean? Especially sometimes, Islamically, obviously, we're all sinners, innit? We're all sinners. But inshallah, I'm going to change one day and I might do that on course. But the thing is, Five years from now, um, within the next few years, my plan, I'll tell you this, right, is to be traveling the world. And I do want to be a motivational speaker, motivating other people, traveling the world. Like I visualize it every day. Um, you know, my dream car is the yellow Lamborghini Aventador. Inshallah, I'm going to have that car. And, uh, you know, I've always said it and I will get it. And I don't care how long it takes me. And potentially, you know, um, hosting awards. You know, one of the biggest goals I've got, which would be sick, is being a host in the Oscars, right? Yeah, like... Literally, I don't think there's no British Pakistani who's done it, right? And obviously, Guz Khan, respect to him. Hopefully, I meet him someday. He's smashing it, right? So, obviously, he's smashing it as well. So, he could, could get it as well, you know what I mean? But I want to be the first pa British Pakistani. Because I know, I think there's a uh, Canadian Indian, a Canadian Pakistani who's, who's, I think he has done it. I think, um, or was it Oscar? He did something. But I, I want to be at the Grammys and the Oscars. I want to be the host. I want to be that guy, like, you know, bringing everyone, like, Yo, what's up, guys? This is your boy, David. And then the crowd says, Central. Like, I visualize that shit. Like, honestly, when I close my eyes and I can see it, like, I, I look as if, like, I can see, because I, I know how crowd looks. Like, for example, I want you to close your eyes right now with me, yeah? Okay. 
So if we close our eyes now, like, you know, imagine you could think the same. So you're doing your politics. Your eyes are little closed, yeah? I want you to say yes or no. Yeah, yeah, okay. my eyes are closed. Keep eyes okay. So we can both do it right now, visualization technique. So our eyes are closed. And just imagine, you know, imagine even if you're doing this podcast right now, right? And it's on stage, though. So it's on stage in front of, it could be in Wembley Arena in front of 90,000 people, bro. And all you can see, I want you to imagine this, keep your eyes closed, right? Is, you know, maybe you've got, you know, so there's lights on us, we're lit, we're, it's lit up, right, yeah? Um, let's say we're in brown leather chairs, um, there might be something, there might be a table in front of us, right? And there's a massive crowd, right, yeah? Like literally, you know, and they're all silent listening to us, but what you can see is lights, you know, like the torchlight on the phone. And that's all you can see around the arena. I just want you to visualize that right now. Just look around the arena and I literally want you to look left and right. You know, left, look right and just imagine what we're looking at is them, these people, you know. Thank you very much guys, we appreciate it. Now, it's central. But that's it. So basically, you know, that is the visualization. That's the level like what I'm looking at and I visualize it every day and I see successful people doing it. And honestly, it sounds crazy, but people probably do think it's crazy, but I visualize my graduation. And, and I'm saying this coming from an area where most of my mates wanted to do illegal activities and I was around people and, you know, I, I ain't no saying, I ain't gonna lie to tell you guys straight, I probably, I, when I was younger, anyone who knows me can verify this, I probably got arrested so many times. Probably, I probably got arrested more than my mates have been in prison, right? It could have, could have been many different things, stupid things, right, yeah? Um, like, you know, sometimes we used to chill in flats, like, you know, like empty houses, right? Because we were young, yeah? Chill in an empty house. We're not allowed to chill in the house. We just jump in the house and chill. We're only like 14, 15, but we'll jump in. And then obviously police would come say, oh, burglary. We don't know. What do you mean burglary? It's an empty house. No one lives inside there. You don't have to rob anything. It was cold outside. We're chilling inside there. But obviously now thinking about it, we should never have done that. But that's what we were doing. But you know, this is a podcast and I'm here to be real. Because you know why I believe about uh, you should be real. Because look, you know, remember one thing in life, you know, as, you, as you're growing, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be hating on you and not liking you if you're coming forward. So they're going to try and come out with facts about you. So if you, listen, this is how I see, if you're real, you're real. Let me look, okay, I probably do mess up, I probably do sin, right? Sometimes people see me with girls on my Instagram. Oh, what are you doing, bro? No, but that's better than you who's chilling with girls off camera. What, okay, you shouldn't show, you shouldn't show your sins or whatever. What I mean is, is that I'm open. I'm open. Does that make sense? Like, I can do what I want to do. And if someone wants to say, he does it, oh, maybe no, maybe no, he'd like that. So like, that's why I'm assertive. Like people are, oh, oh, he said this. Yeah, but we know he's like that anyway, it's cool. I look at Simon Cowell. He gets away with a lot of things that no one else can get away with saying. If someone else said to someone, are you, are you crap? People be like, oh my God, you see how rude he was. You know, Donald Trump, he gets away. He become a president for, and he was racist. Because he's, he's, because people like, people respect that, you know. Honestly, I've learned that it sounds crazy. People respect a person who's straight to the point. Because they're like, you know what? This person, because they, they know you're real in it. Like, who, do you, who, do you, who would you trust more? You know, someone who's just always being nice. Or how do I look? Uh, yeah, you look nice, bro. You know what I mean? Or the guy who's saying, you know what, bro? My brother, can you do me a favor? You look sick. Yeah, you're a sexy guy. But can you just take that jacket off, bro? You're like, it don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't, like, you know what I mean? Like, anything, you know what I mean? <laughs> Literally, that could, that's assertive, isn't it? It's called being assertive. Standing in a queue now, someone jumped in front of you. Most people are like, Brother, uh, don't mind me saying, you know what I'm saying, brother, don't mind me saying, I've been waiting in this queue for about five, ten minutes. Can you please jump in the back of the queue? Yeah? Other people are waiting as well. That's being assertive, you're not being rude. Don't be, a, we call it a chalo. Don't be a chalo, be assertive. You don't need to cause a fight. You gotta be straight up. You're in a shop. They take, you've been waiting there for five minutes. They're taking other people's orders. They're not taking yours, but you've been waiting longer than everyone else. Be straight up. Say, brother, I'm not gonna lie. I love your food, but what are you doing? And you'll notice they'll be like, oh, sorry, you know, that. and if they don't, walk out, done. You know what I mean? Like, you, you gotta be like, don't call the fuss, but be assertive, right? You know what I'm trying to say? Like, people have been assertive with me, you know what I mean? And, and, and I respect them. You, like, someone might, in your life, someone's always been assertive with you. Like, your family does it all the time, your parents. Don't, you know, don't put your feet on the table, don't do this. You know what I mean? That's being assertive, isn't it? It's not like, you know, why are you telling me not to put the feet on the table? You know what I mean? Like, I know, I know some of my young lads and that they do get gusa at home and stuff, you know what I mean? But we all, we've all had that, ain't it? We've all had that, you know what I mean? Like, you know, Don, that's not a shy thing. I know everyone has switched at home. Our parents nag at us, you know what I mean? They do nag at us, you know what I mean? They come from a good place, but 
you know, sometimes everyone does get, you know, like, you've had a bad day, your family says, what are you doing, bro? You're like, I don't want to hear it right now, you know what I'm trying to say, you know what I mean? We all do that, and, you know, it's straight up, and you know when you hear someone else say it, that's when you feel like it's fine to say it. It's weird, isn't it? Like, but that's what Naveed Central is all about. You know, at the beginning, he said, what's Naveed Central? The brand is a real. Team Central is all about being real. Well, who is Team Central? Everyone who supports what I'm doing. Because you're a part of it. And what I'm trying to promote is you be real. When you meet other people, show them love, show them respect, show them kindness. How you doing? You're right. Okay, if you have a bad day, right? And okay, everyone has bad days. I'm not saying I could have a bad day. And, you know, like, look, my cousin told me this. My cousin, yeah, um, you know, uh, uh, he was well respected, you know, the young guy and that, yeah. And um, I ain't gonna lie, you know, growing up, that's one thing that did help me though. My, my cousins were like, um, my cousins were big people, man. Like, you know, a lot of people knew him and they, they never took you no know, shit from people, but they were nice people. You get me? People were like, oh, that's so and so. The older people in the area wouldn't pick on me, right? You know, women used to get spat on, Pakistani women used to get spat on, bro. These guys used to go and, and literally, in them situations, they used to, they used to fight for, 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 you know, the Asian community, man. You know what I mean? Racists used to come in the National Front, this, that, when we were younger. I was I'll probably going boom, but you know what I mean? Um, so that, that you know, it, it's sad that he passed away. I was, you probably know he was in it. But he passed away, man, and he was a very good guy. And one thing I learned from him, you know, honestly, he was one of the best guys. Like, you probably did meet him and Imran. I think I met his dad at the academy. Dad. Okay, yeah, you probably did meet his dad. But, um, you know, a lot older than him, and he, um, he, I think he died in 2011. And uh, so he, he was a... Uh, he was a very nice man. Every showed love to everyone. Man could fight. He was on it. He wasn't a bully. Showed love to everyone. Always smiling. See, I've learned these things like from him as well. And uh, like the way he kind of, like some of my personality is like, I, I couldn't be like him. But I, I just, a lot of the time I try and be like him, like how he was. Like he, he like, like a role model. Yeah, he was one of my role models. You know, like, you know, he, he was, um, he was a, he's a very friendly guy, man. He showed everyone love wherever he'd go. How you doing? You want any food? Remember him at the time then, you know, um, before he passed away, he started making some money. But before, before that, he was, uh, sometimes he, I knew he didn't have much money himself, bro. And, you know, me and my other cousin, um, Mabashi, we've gone to him. And one day, you know, we needed 50 pence. <laughs> like the, he said, have you got 50 pence, cousin, yeah? Bro, he just put that bit of change, yeah? And he's going, yo, take it. I mean, like, that, that was his last to be of change, but... He's gonna take it. He goes, go to the shop. And that was more than 50 pounds. A few pounds. He's going, no, 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 we want 50 pounds. He goes, this is how it was. He said, listen, I'm gonna punch you if you don't take the money. Go. Yeah. Spoil you guys. Isn't it? And that was it. And honestly, like, with that, I see kids. And, like, you know, the kids, especially from Aston and that, like, if I see him in like, Tesco or something. And like, I'll do that sometimes. I'll be like, yo, like, you know, I shouldn't be sharing, but still, in there, like, maybe someone else could take leave. Like, I'll be like, yo, don't, kids, don't be expecting this of all the time. You know what I'm trying to do? Yeah, but. Sometimes if I know they're a bit down and they see him shopping and they've got a little bit on them and I think, you know, I go, you know what? If, I, if I've got any, if I haven't got any, if I haven't got any, well, yo, bro, listen, take, yeah, take some change, man. You get me? Because I'd rather me give that kid than a shot I give him. I'll tell you why. This is something what I'm going to say serious now, yeah? See, a lot of older people in your areas are going to give you money or try and buy you things, but that's because they want you to shop for them and they put you in debt, right? What do I mean by this? You might be in a chip shop. Guys, let me buy food. Always look at what that guy is doing. If I buy you food, I don't want you to do anything for me because I'm not a drug dealer. So you can trust me. But if, if it's a guy who you know is a drug dealer or does something, he buys you food, don't take it. Do not take that food, right? I'll tell you why. Because he is going to start buying you food. He might say, jump in my car, chill with me, right? And guess what? You're going on the rounds, but not just that. He's just enticing you into the lifestyle. You're seeing the money now. You see, he might pull out. Yeah, oh, listen, let's go Nando's today, little one. You're thinking, you know, I'd like my older brother taking me Nando's. When he goes Nando's, you know, he pulls out a big wad, right? When he goes Nando's, he, 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 he pulls out cash, for example, and he's like, yeah, man, you know what? Like, let, 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 let's, let's, let's see a perfect example, yeah? He'll go like this. He'll be like, if you watch this, he'll be like this. He goes, yeah, man, you know what? Did the bill probably come to about 20 pounds? He'll pull out more like, deliberately, but he'll make sure you're looking. And if you're not looking, he ain't going to pay. He'll be like, hey, yo, what do you want, bro? Bam, like that. He'll, he'll be like that. So then he's, he's waiting. He's, he's waiting for you now to look. And you've looked. He's got you enticed now. Like, yo, 
you know what kid lowly but surely our kid listen uh, you know what he knows you're broke he's making you dependent on him now you know when a kid needs a parent for the, to give him food and milk he's doing this your family probably ain't got much money your dad can't take you there you think my dad ain't giving me nothing my mom ain't giving me nothing this is what happened in ghetto areas bro I grew up in a two, fucking, two bedroom house bro you know what I'm trying to say like literally grew up you know what I'm saying if, if six of us in the house bro like what me and my sibs, three siblings in one bedroom you know what I'm saying like literally this is what life so you know it was easy for me to do the same thing you know easy for me to start selling probably what crack heroin or you know random stuff like I could have easily you know gone in a mad one right um, but that's what it comes down to they entice you right and um, it happened to me it happened to me but I still won't know till this day whether the guy did it why he did it I'll tell you why I'll tell you a story now so basically you know um, when I was 17 I kicked out my house for a few months two months yeah Still remember about it was the 13th of February, yeah? but listen, I'll tell you why. <laughs> now, I mentioned this on, you know, a six, the, the guy's success story. That, uh, I mentioned this a little bit of it. Basically, he, um, my dad kicked me out because I was chilling with the wrong mates, yeah, but 13th of February because it was Valentine's Day the next day. Yeah? <laughs> and uh, obviously, um, I couldn't go and see my girl because <laughs> I was down in it. I was thinking, damn, it's Valentine's Day the next day. But basically, uh, my dad kicked me out of the house, this, that. And, uh, when my dad kicked me out of the house, right? Um, I was chilling with the wrong people and this and that, yeah? And uh, obviously, you know, I ain't gonna lie, me and my dad had a bit of an altercation, I'm trying to say, yeah? Obviously, young, I was hot-headed. And, um, you know, I was chilling with the wrong people. I was wondering, like, oh, you can't chill with these people. And he said, I was like, what do you mean, blah, blah, blah. And then he said, kick me out of the house, yeah? So kick me out of the house. I was living in a hostel for two months in uh, Gravity Hill North. Um, I forgot what it's called. Basically, I was living in a hostel, yeah, it's in the middle of Gravely, uh, Gravely Hill, Gravely Lane, yeah. And the guy is to pick me up now, yeah, listen. And I still don't know to this day. I will never know. But maybe it's because of me. Because I look, you know, when I was 17, look, I was still studying, though. Still revised for my exams, you know. Honestly, right, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, he's picking me up now. And saying, uh, you know, because he found out I was down. I was homeless, he's seen me a few times, he's like, you know what, yeah, I'll, don't worry, I'll, I'll give you this sometime, I'll take my number, I'll take on cruises. Start taking on cruises now. Obviously, as a kid, McDonald's is nice. You know, McDonald's, you take us, you know what I mean? As a kid, you, you eat McDonald's, bro, you don't need the Nando's. McDonald's is cool. McDonald's is pulling out, that, he's putting the same thing, but I've only pulled out a bit, he's pulling out wads. Like, he's deliberately pulling it out at the time when he clock on. And then he's like, oh, then he's, then he's putting passengers in the car. Like first started off, he was picking up, taking food. Then he started getting, selling drugs in the car. So, you know, this is how I do it. And then like, he tried asking me once if I wanted to hold it. I said, no, no, I'm not holding that. And then, you know what it was? I started telling him like, yo, I'm going to study. You know, I'm going to study. I'm going to do this. So I think he started clocking on a bit. Yo, this guy. See, they'll do that. They'll try and figure you out. They'll try and find out what you want to do, what you got going for you. Because they might have a bit of a heart in it. Like even that little bit, like, oh, because for seeing me thinking he's going to study, he's thinking, oh, he's a waste of time because he's going to study anyway, right? If they're seeing you and you're thinking, oh, you ain't going nowhere or you ain't going to do nothing big, why not entice you with this life? But my head's always been screwed because I'm a mom. My mom has taught us, yo, this is the right way. My mom obviously got married young and this and that, but I was 16, 17, but the thing is, she didn't know about the out things, but she knew what's how to, about success. She always said, my kids are going to get degrees in martial art. Me and all my brothers have got degrees. My, brother, my, brother, my little brother studied uh, business management. My older brother in accounting, you know what I'm trying to say? So, I was emotional. That's my mom's dream, is it? Like, that, that happened. And, um, you know, this drug dealer now, oh, he's picking me up, this, that. But guess what happens? I still don't know. Why do I say I don't know? Because after two months, right, I ended up getting back home. Yeah, what I'm saying, though, this is why I believe he was trying to lure me into shop for him, right? Because he goes. When I got back home, he sent me once, final time now, he'd come to me, yeah? He's only around a quarter from me. He's come to me, he said, you're back home now. He's going, yeah. He gave me like, I think it was, I think it was 50 pounds he gave me. I did the lad, he took me around a quarter, 50 pounds, he'll take that for money, yeah? But, after that day, when I'm back home, now he, he, we stopped linking up. Stop linking me now, right? Um, and I was dumb because he's still trying to call him and say, you're link up and he's like, oh, I'm busy now, this, that. So what I, what I took from that was that he saw me in a vulnerable position 
he was trying to lure me in to entice me, show me the lifestyle, and he wanted me to sell drugs really for him. But I was too smart. But he also knew one thing, my cousin, not, not my, just my cousin, my other cousins were serious people. So because they were serious people, right, he knew you can't force me and you can't say to me what, but sometimes they'll do that. They'll say, yo, what? They'll probably tell you to hold something. Oh, now you owe me for that. No, I don't want that back. You owe me for that. Now you got to make it back for me. I'm going to say, or they probably set it up that you get robbed or something. And then they say, oh, you got my thing stolen now, right? You got my thing stolen. You know what? You got to work for me now. That's it. And what I say, don't take nothing. Don't take nothing. Even though it might look nice, you might not have a pound in your packet, pocket. Your family might be broke. Do not take the money. Do not take the food. Thank you very much. Nice. Done. Your own cousin can do you over. It's true though, isn't it? Your own cousin can do you over, bro. And um, that's why you got to realize that, you know, life is going to be full of people who are like, you know, um, wolves dis disguised. Vultures. Vultures. Wait till you're vulnerable and they come after you. Exactly. What do you call them? Um, wolves uh, disguised in a sheep's... Wolves disguised in sheep's clothing. That's a famous saying. Yeah. yeah. One thing I read him is a very good listener. You know what? I think your podcast is going to go very far. You're a very good listener. No, it like. is. I've got big ears. Look, I'm blessed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Tell us about, you know, you kids nowadays have a lot of facilities, they have phones, their own bedroom, good education, nice clothes. I see kids wearing three, four hundred pound trainers and just compare it to what we had when we were growing up. Not everyone had it like us, but let's just say me and you, how we were. Okay, now, um, my cousin told me the other day, he said, he, well, yesterday he said to me, yeah, um, you know. By the way, guys, before before I begin, I'm saying something crazy. You can Claude. Coincidentally, I am wearing the same color as the seat. But you can't see it because it's black and white. Yeah. You don't tell them the color. I cannot say the color. So you can guess it in the comments section. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see if you can guess what color it is. Yeah. Hey. But they probably know in it because they've seen me. They know. But basically, it's a coincidence. I was meant to be here, and I didn't know what color the seats were. I believe it's crazy. It, it, it is martial arts, amazing. What is it? Crazy, it's amazing. So everything happens for a reason. But what I was gonna say is okay, cool. You know, living accommodation. When I said that, so you mentioned our clothes, kids wearing clothes, and basically my cousin said, "Oh, you're always wearing different clothes. You don't wear the same clothes on two days in a row, right?" So even though I haven't got, don't I'm not like oh, I wear. Obviously, like I've got, I change, I, I throw my clothes away. I, I tend to alternate my clothes on a daily basis. There's a reason for that, right? Um, when I was younger. I used to probably wear the same clothes around the whole week. Same probably t-shirts and be like, the apple, I mean, or whatever. Stinking, you don't even realize it, you know what I mean? Like, you know, life was like that. Rips in my jeans, you know, in, in the middle of your jeans with the rips, bro. Like, this was life, man. Like, life was hard, you know what I mean? Rips on your trainers, but your family can't afford it. You know, don't think that, oh, this and that, life was hard. Proper hard, you know what I'm saying? But you know what it was? You know, I think... Cause you're cause you grew up in a ghetto area and your mates like you've always got that one mate who's probably got a lot of money yeah but you know cause you grew up around your area and that yeah like you know with your friends and stuff and they probably ain't got much they don't mind no one's no no one's mocking you but sometimes people are probably mocking you and what it comes down to is um you know that when it comes to clothes right we didn't have much didn't have much at all yeah and. People don't realize this and they think, yo, because I ain't got much, I need to do bad things now to do it. But no, just be patient, right? And respect whatever your family can give you. And understand that your family might not have much, much, much money, but that's your, that's the reason for you to go and do it. But in a legit way, in today's society, you've got what we ain't got. Let's not talk about the clothes. Don't blow your money. Like, are your kids dumb? Your dad's going to buy you 300 pound trainers. Get them 300 pound trainers and invest it. In 300 pounds, I say, no, listen, I don't want trainers. Dad, buy me normal trainers, it's cool. I buy 110, 100 pounds, 200 pounds. I want to go buy something and sell it. Guys, you can sell face masks. You know what I mean? Right now in the corona pandemic, you can sell so many different things. Sell them juices if you want. You know, just think, sit down and brainstorm. You're a kid, you're more creative than anyone. Sit with your friends. Say, yo, what can we think of? What can we sell? You can sell eyelashes. Even if you're a guy, you can sell eyelashes to girls. Girls buy eyelashes. Girls who wear hijabs, sell hijabs. You know what I'm saying? Find a way, where can you find a good link? You know what I mean? You can sell things, and you don't need to sell drugs to make a profit. You can still sell other things, right, yeah? Um, you can sell a lot of things, man, and entrepreneurship, and you know, you don't, it's just the problem is in today's society, 
People want instant gratification. Instant gratification meaning that, you know, they want to be gratified by people or people to rate them. That's the word we say, oh, they rate them. They people say, yo, yeah, I rate my man. He's got this and that. I say this, and I've always said this, and any one of my mates, if you're watching this, you will know this, right? Would you rather be the guy who's 20 years old saying I had, I was made when I was 20, I had this car, that, and now I'm 30, 40. It's a normal guy telling the story about this and that. Or would you rather be 30, 40 years old, made, not about money, but I'm just giving an example, because if you're after money, that's why you're a drug dealer, isn't it? Made saying, yo, I never had much when I was 20, but now, quite loads. How many times do you meet that guy who's, who's you know, who probably ain't got much now and all his tells you, that older guy, oh, I had this back in the days. I had that back in the days. How many times do you meet them people who say that? You know what I mean? Oh, when I was younger, bro, we had that. Let me tell you something now. I'm probably giving a story about my life, but really and truly, this is because it's a podcast. There's something called the 24-hour rule, which Andy Priscilla spoke about, and I heard that the other day. He says, yo, if you ain't done something in... If, if, what, if what you're speaking about, you ain't done in the last 24 hours, don't talk about it. Because no one cares. Unless it's motivational and it's going to bring something to the table, right? Like this, for example, or you, 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 you see facts, talent, story, selfish, telling you. But if you're trying to do it to say, oh, I was a fighter back in the days and I was a, or you're just randomly saying it's not a podcast. It's not something like that. You're saying, oh, I was a fighter back in the days. I was uh, rich back in the days. No one cares, man. They care about who you are now. They don't even care what you did last week. You probably won an award two months ago. They don't care no more. That was then. There's new awards every day. I, I was the number one comedian in the world. Probably were, bro. It's like me being, uh, you know, uh, 50 years old and saying, guys, uh, you know, uh, when I was in my 20s, uh, you know, people used to say Naveed Central, right? Yeah, and, uh, you know, you don't know that, you know, me, but now, you know what, I ain't got that no more, but you lot don't know, you lot think you lot are big. That's why they do it, and they try and say, yo, try and compare themselves to people. But that's what I'm saying in it. Like, literally, that's one message I can say as well, is that if you are going to speak, only speak about these kind of things when you know it might inspire other people and motivate them. Don't do it to try and show off, right? You know, um, you're saying to people about instant gratification. People just want to make success overnight. But success isn't something that happens overnight. It's a long term. So... These young people who are watching or anybody watching is going to be inspired. What's the verse? Your patience. <laughs> so you obviously got five-year plan at the moment. Patience is sitting in this room watching our podcast, right? And not having a problem with it. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah. No, but um, um, patience is um, obviously dynamically done on it. Like I'm a, I'm a sinner, but there are things and things. And, you know, okay. Patience is having sober and, and, and realizing that, you know, the fruits of your labor will be rewarded, right? You know, um, like, you know, there's many, there's many things which in life are going to take you ages to do, like a long time to do. Like my degree took me three years. I went to the University of Birmingham before that for a year, right? And I didn't want to stay at home, so I left. But they didn't let me transfer, so I had to redo that as well. Does that make sense? So, but I'm happy I didn't, I didn't transfer because I would have been in the second year, I wouldn't have got the first year experience, whatever, yeah? But I feel sorry for them, the first years now. Oh, they miss you now on the, because you can't even sit next to people in the <laughs> lecture. That I think a lot of unis are cancelled, aren't they? Like online only. Yeah, so it's crazy, man. Like, nah, man, it's nah, 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 man. But it's, a uni was the best time of my life. Well, it was. It really was. Like, I, I cannot deny that. You know what I mean, um, Hopefully the better times come in. Right now, the better, actually, you know what? Right now, the best time of my life. Right now. Because I'm alive right now and everything that's happening is amazing. Right? And what did I just do? The, you know, I'm, I'm mentioning time about uni. No one cares. It's been years. It's done. Can't sit in the past. 24-hour rule. I'm excited. This is the best time of my life. This is the best time of your life. You're watching this right now. This is the best time of your life. Why? Because you're alive and you're watching Navid Central on the Windmill podcast. You know what I'm saying? But basically, guys, Big Mo on the scene. Yeah? And um, hopefully we're gonna, hopefully, hopefully we're gonna do a uh, mukbang as well at some point. Yeah, yeah. Already. I don't even know what mukbang is, so, so I do, need I do to educate me. So I do mukbangs where I eat on camera, right? Yeah, eat on camera. Yeah, so we eat I can eat. Amazing. I'm good at that. So we um we eat on camera and we have a chat. I um I've done a few with different people and uh, sometimes I do it alone as well. But it's turning into a big thing. A lot of my 
followers told me to do it. They started saying to me, you should do mukbangs. I said, why? They said, oh, we, we'd enjoy if you did. Because I was always like sometimes promoting food and sort of eating. I was like, yo, if you do a mukbang, it'd be sick. So I eat on camera. But I thought, okay, wouldn't it be sick? Because I started off doing inspirational interviews. Like, obviously, I just bought a mic, the road, road mic, yeah? Um, my normal mic, handheld mic. I use in my public interviews. You've probably seen them. But I was going to people and doing an inspirational interviews, like, and this is a podcast, a bit different, but that's like an interview, like I was interviewing people. But this is like an interview today, innit? But basically, I was interviewing people, and uh, you can check out my YouTube channel as well. Um, and then when they did the mukbang, I thought, oh, look, why don't I just eat, eat with people on camera? Just bring people on and eat with them on camera. That's what I started doing. So now that's what I'll probably do with you as well, right? Yeah, um, is we could sit down and um, what we could potentially do it. I don't know, we could potentially do it once this is out. Then once this is out, people are going to, then I could ask your story. Yeah, we'll work something out. Yeah, I, mean, I, I could ask your story and say, oh, hey, um, um, so anyways, you we were saying, right, patience. Patience is something that, you know, it, it, they say patience is a virtue and you've got to have patience. You've got to be willing to realize that nothing's going to come easy. And if it comes easy, it's not worth it, right? Nothing in life worth having comes easy. See, like, for example, if you see, like, world-class people like Floyd Mayweather or Anthony Joshua, they ain't world-class, right, uh, from uh, doing boxing for a year. It's taking them time. Whatever, whoever you see doing amazing things in life, it's taken them a long time. That tennis player you're speaking about, I'll, I'll tell you straight, I'm not really into that much sports apart from, like, boxing or kickboxing, right, um, and uh, martial arts. But even then, like, or UFC, but even then, I'm not that much of a... I don't watch it too much. I prefer, like, I love, you know, doing a bit of it, but not watching it as much. Like, boxing, I do like. If it's a big fight, I'll watch it. Or even World Cup, I'll watch it. But, um, yeah, because time, time is of the essence, man. I'm always thinking of something. Always read books. I read books every single day, right? Um, or I listen to an audio book. Like, you know, different books. Um, I was reading a book recently called um, The Richest Man in Babylon. Sick book. Um, I was told to read that book a long time ago. Uh, another book which is amazing. I don't know if you read it. How to Win Friends and Influence People, right? Um, yeah, that's. And now you mentioned them too. I'll go away and research them. Yeah, yeah. How to Win Friends and Influence People is is a book that um I've, a lot of people have read. And when you hear, okay, but people, see, a narrow-minded person say, "Why would I need to read a book on how to win friends and influence people?" I'll tell you why. Right? There are certain techniques, right? And some people think, "Oh, that's cunning." No, it's not. Certain techniques and things that you can learn, right? Which would help you in life, right? Let me give an example. We don't know what we do is what we're doing is wrong until we're told. But sometimes we don't like to be told. But when you learn from some of the best communicators in the world, right? That's when you start to realize. Let me give an example of a perfect thing. We're taught in Islam anyway, but like, look, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him, was was one of the best communicators in the world. Now he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was you know, he's a smile at people. Now most people don't even smile at people when they're talking to him. They don't smile at people, right? Now, that's why they need to learn these skills. You go to this book and it'll tell you smile at people. It'll tell you be genuinely interested in people. A lot of these things you probably do do. Like when I read the book, I realized, okay, a lot of these things I do do already, right? Um, but then there's a lot of things that I don't do. Like I probably need to be a better listener. I understand that, right? And I've booked, read that book several times. I still need to, re you know what I mean? Because I'm like, a, I'm probably high dosed on ADHD, bro. So that, like, you know, that, that's like ADHD, you know, some people think it's a bad thing, it's a mental issue, but it's not. Steve Jobs had it, you know what I'm saying? Um, so when you are passionate about things, it does help you. But like, I think most Asians have Pakistanis. Especially Mirpuris have got ADHD, but they're just active, you know, it's because they're active on a mad one, right? Um, but basically, that's what I think that with the ADHD, not ADHD, but basically being like hyperactive and stuff, I do talk a lot. But sometimes people love it. When I don't talk, we're like, why aren't you talking? That makes sense. But in that book, it does speak about being a better listener. So what you're doing right now is from that book, right? Um, there's many other things like uh, I've used them. I have used them, right? Um, in situations. So for example, you know, let's say now you want something, right? Um, you want to tell someone something, sorry. You want to tell someone something. But it's bad. Now, I'll give a perfect example. It's in that book. And I didn't know that until I read the book. Now, imagine now, okay, you, you're, you're a tea boxing teacher, right? Okay. Let's say now someone's coming. And he is not throwing punches properly. He's not going in a stance. And you've said it a few times. You keep indirectly reiterating it in the class. You keep emphasizing it. So guys, get in your stance like this. Put your hands up. Keep your hands next to your face, next to your chin. 
right? Make sure you're, you're on your toes, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, everyone knows, but there's one student or two students who ain't following it, right? So they're like, you know, they've got their hands down because they're probably watching the video, hands down. And they're just trying to bounce up and down and that's it. But they're not really doing anything, right? Or if they're sparring, you're, you're telling them, look, you know, keep your hands up. You're not keeping your hands up. But what's better? This is the difference between a manager and a leader, right? Even in a customer service environment, what's better? What are you doing? I told you to, I told you to be in your stance. What are you doing? Have you not got a brain? I told you to keep your hands up. I've, guys, I've said it a million times. Keep your hands up. Why are you not keeping your hands up? Are you stupid? Come to the front, show your stance. Everyone look. Did you just put that kid off? Or son, or nephew. Listen, look, you're being nice. So nephew, right? You know what? You got potential, you know. I can see that you could go far with boxing. You could actually get somewhere like, I can see your determination. I can, the fact that you're coming here, I know you could probably be world champion, you know. But you know what? Have you heard me saying a few times about keeping your hands up? You know why I say that? Because obviously, if you, keep your, if you don't keep your hands up, you're going to get hit. Have you seen like, um, see Amir Khan get knocked out, for example, right? You know, do you know why that was? Never had his hands up, right? So what if, you know, you get knocked out, I care about your safety, you don't, would, you, would you agree that it's, it, it'd be good to keep your hands up? Yeah? Exactly, son. Don't let me see your hands down again. Take care. Now that kid is going to go off and he's going to deliberately keep his hands up He's going to keep his hands up even when you're talking for no reason. He's already to do it because you've spoken nicely. You bigged him up first, then you told him. And that's one skill I learned from that book that, you know, don't, it says don't condemn, criticize or complain, right? Don't complain. No one likes a complainer. But if you are going to have to criticize because it's essential, right? You say, hey, to think of how can I big them up, right? Same way I said to you, look, Someone's, someone's uh, asked you how did it look? And my mom only asks me um, how she looks in the house, really, because she knows I'm the truth. I'll tell the truth, right? Um, but I've always been like that, though. I'll tell it straight. I don't like that. I'm going to say, but sometimes good ways are like, you could teach someone like, always try and find something that is good in them and mention that first. So when you do criticize them, they don't feel bad. And people then people will really dislike you, man. If you're the guy who's turning around saying, oh, look at you, you got this. And you're not that person, like, if, if you look, for example, yeah, man, and you're like, you've got a bogey in your nose, but you're in a group. Ah, oh, look at you, bro, clean your face. Thinking, who the? You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? It happens. But I'm going to say, yo, bro, come here one second, fam. I want to say in front of everyone else, but listen, because you've got a bogey in your nose, bro, can you just do me a favor and put tissue in them, man? People can start off in it, bro. Right, yeah? Obviously, a good looking guy, and if you're not trying to say anything, you know what I mean? Bam! That person, bro, forget just how, what level of respect they got for you. They love you even more now. They're going to walk away thinking, yo, I love my man. I love Mo. I love Naveed. You know what? My man's real, bro. You know, most people are that. But anyway, that's it. Yeah, that's it. You know, we're going to finish in a normal way. Okay. We asked the guests to give the closing statement. Yeah. You can give a few shout outs or a few links to your pages if you want. But whatever you think is fitting to close us off, go for it. Okay, amazing. So I'm going to leave it with a message. Right, yeah. My messages don't are never ending, aren't they? That's why I need to be on the stage. You know, sorry to interrupt you, yeah? yeah. I do know that you mentioned rapping before, so maybe you can drop one, two bars in there. I'm not very good. I'll give you a, I'll give you a poem. I'll give you a poem. And um, one thing, okay, I didn't mention in this podcast, but I believe your podcast is going to be big, and I will say it, right, yeah? Um, it, it's about my life, and I, before, before we end up here, you finish here, you end up the last message, is that what a lot of people don't know is, when I mentioned having a hard life, I meant it was really hard. Right. And I want people to know this because they should know it, right? How hard it was. And I, I want to stop this, right? And it's going to relate to the message, right? And I will give you the uh, motivational rap, though. So basically, um, I also, right? Yeah. Um, in the same year that my cousin passed away, but it's nothing relevant to that because I didn't know my cousin were, right? Cousin was, um, I got stabbed, right? Yeah. Um, on my arm here, right here. Um, and uh, obviously, I got stabbed, but the reason I got stabbed was because it was, it was going to be like a one-on-one -on -one fight, but then they tried rushing me, and um, it, it's an operational scar, though. It's, you can sort of see it, yeah? You zoom in when you see the thing later. But basically, I got stabbed, but the reason for that was, hands up. Hands up! Hear what I'm saying? Hear what I'm saying? 
Hands up. What did I say? Hands up. Exactly. No, no. I won't tell you to say anything. I know. Uh, yeah, natural reaction, yeah. So what happened is by rushing me. As they're rushing me, I've gone like this. Now you get me. So when I'm there, look. Where did I get stabbed? There. I like, someone's gonna think, how did you get stabbed then? As I got stabbed there like that. Hands up. My hands being up saved me. If my hands didn't say, if my hands weren't up, I could have got stabbed in the neck. Where was it looking here, fam? You know what I mean? So I did get stabbed and um, that essentially, was a lot, obviously before I went to uni and stuff as well, yeah? But that essentially was a, a time in my life as well. And I, that's what I'm saying, yo, don't use knives. Right, yeah, don't use knives because they're not worth it. You know what I'm saying? Like literally, you know, you could actually endanger someone. And imagine I did get stabbed in the neck. Imagine I did and I died. That person would be looking at a life sentence. See you kids who are carrying knives nowadays and think you're bad. Let me tell you something right now, right? That knife could end someone's life or do something to someone. You might think you're not going to get caught, but when you get caught, bruv, let me tell you, you're looking at a very long time in prison, but not even that. Or you're looking at that guy coming back for you, right? And something else happening there. Or, right, um, you're, you're, why is it again? You're living with the guilt. You're living with the guilt, but not just that, right? No, no, no. The thing is, you might go to prison and think it's okay, but then that person's family is in the prison. So it could be prison. It could be that person could come back for you and do, beat you up or do something to you, right? Or it's one of their family members who will come after you. And it's never ending. It's a cycle, it's a cycle, it's a cycle. That's why it is. There is no point, right? Put the knives down, put the gloves on, right? Yeah. And that's what it's about. And what I will say, uh, you said to me, um, you said to me to give a motivational rap, yeah? Sometimes life, it can be a struggle. But then you realize that it's really like a puzzle. Everything will work out despite seeming like a muddle. Just remember everyone else is on the same hustle. Keep that fire inside. Don't collide with the people in the world who ain't on your side. This world is wide. Don't think about pride. Be blind to the haters. Let your dreams guide. So dream big dreams. Work by any means. Success is through your efforts and not through your genes. Visualize success. Life will be blessed. You can live like a king or live like a mess. Everyone has hard times, but you can't stress. What's happened in my life, you can't even guess. I still walk with my head high, even though I want to cry. I know I'll reach success as long as I try, right? Some people want cars, some want to run bars. Shoot for the moon, you miss, you get the stars. Fortune favors the bold, even if you're, if you're old. As a matter of fact, you're never too old to pursue your dreams and reach your goals, but it won't be easy. This world is cold. It's dog eat dog. I should write a blog, but I prefer rhyming because in my mind there's a fog of millions of lyrics. I like this some spirits. Spirits, I just speak the truth. There are no limits. Da -da 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 -da. And I don't care if you listen this, to this through Dre Beats or Phillips. Now, Vid Central, guys, it's been emotional. It's been an absolute pleasure to be sharing my story on this podcast, Windmill Boxing Podcast. And guys, you know, honestly, I believe this podcast is going to be massive. Your skills are incredible. I feel like I've learned from you even when I'm doing my mukbangs in terms of the listening, I need to listen more, right? And you're a very good listener. I want to shout out my socials. So my show socials are, show socials, socials are N-A-V-W-E-D Central, Navid Central on YouTube, TikTok and Snapchat, and also Navid Central 1. So N-A-V-W-E-D Central 1 on Instagram, right? Um, but yeah, thank you so much for having me on the show. I really appreciate that, bro. And uh, I wish you all the success, man.